So while uh, our ch archiving our data packs for uh, they have been loaned to us for by Xerox, uh, sure enough, uh, we had a few uh, head crashes, light ones most of the time, but then we got a real bad one. Uh, so now we need to take the heads out and clean them for good, uh, or even replace them. So uh, Carl has taken the heads out of the disk drive, and you can see. You know the uh, the state of the surface. It has to be pristine clean, and of course, this ones have hit the disk, so they are a little bit smudged. So we take them off, and then we are going to do a realignment. Uh, we got the realignment cartridge from uh, Bruce Damer. You can kind of tell with the naked eye, but with the microscope, you can tell for sure. It has some. Actually, it's not that bad. It is not that bad because it's smudges, right? So you could take it out. It is, doesn't look damaged. But there's enough residue that it would crash again if we tried it. Want to have a look, uh, Ken? And and thanks to um, Bruce, we have a couple new heads from the Digi Barn. New or refurbished, we don't know. Uh, they look pretty good. But that's what they should look like. If I can. So this is pristine clean. Okay, so we have to make the old one look like this again. So fortunately, the, the the head itself body is ceramic, so it's really hard to damage, right? Which is more because the very prior generation from IBM uh -huh. were all um, chrome, polished chrome. That was like 1311, 2311. So that's the one you have in your IBM right. discs. Right, right. And so if you crash that one, you there's big gouges in the chrome. You're 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 dead. Yeah, the chrome's just too soft. Well, anyway, I have the top one loose, so we can remove the top one. I can see it coming out. Ta-da! yip -a doo Ooh! This one, that's the one we had a big crash with. Right, let me yeah. try to focus on it. Very ugly. There you go. So this one had a tough... That was a hard crash. All right. Use swab and uh, no pure isopropanol. They eventually get there. It's much better, but you know, the ceramics all clean. The poles are all clean, but there's some on the either side. So my next try would uh, be to use ultrasound, see if we can dislodge it and make it pristine clean. That's 99.9% .9 isopropanol, or it was at some point. Bloop. And take a bath. Uh, Degas on up, here we go. Right. So the ultrasound sure made a difference. So this is the uh, little really badly crash head, and it is tiny speck left. But I think it's just color. So the clean heads are back in, and uh, now uh, Cal has uh, hooked up the osmoloscope, so we can get to the process of relining them. And for that, we have a special cartridge, this guy here. So this disc has this one special track, Actually, or two, two special tracks, right. that are at cylinder 100. And 105. And you want to put the heads either over, one, over 105. For high density drives, which is what this is. Right. It's 
that noise. Why is it making the noise? I mean, in case it's lower head or something. Sure. I don't think it is. And that surface looks good. That surface looks good. Okay. okay. It just makes scary noises. Yeah, scary noise. man. Well, we just diagnosed one of the weirdest failures I have ever seen. We were trying to finally to get our clean head realigned and we were using the uh, DigiBarn supposedly good alignment cartridge. And we spun it once, twice, it worked and then all of a sudden it started to make horrible noise uh, up to the point where it wouldn't spin anymore. And the spindle no look barely free. Long story short, we tried to realign everything, nothing would do it. Uh, and out of desperation, we took a platter out of the cartridge to figure out what was happening. And then we put it on here. So it's located by the spindle. So when it's in the disc, the uh, platter is not touching the cartridge at all. It's pushed up by the spindle and centered. So the cartridge is just a shell and the platter is floating inside. And it was rubbing here and on the head so it was too high and we couldn't figure out what alignment full would do that. We hadn't done anything to change the alignment until we discovered that this thing doesn't belong in the spindle. This ring was just left over and it's a ring that's supposed to be at the bottom of the disc and that somehow broken off from it, sheared off from it. So this is aluminum for the main hub and then they add a uh, stainless steel ring that's magnetic so it sticks to the strong magnet, magnet here and when it spins and somehow it sheared right here and was left on the spindle. Okay, since we don't have much to lose, uh, I am going to try to redrill holes and have it fit into the thing. We'll see. Hopefully, it will be good. So, we're going to try to drill our so we can screw it in so the disc is underneath right here so I hope it's not stainless I hope it's not it's not good Okay, so we have all of it redrilled and reattached with screws. Right. right, so now it's attached with screws. All right. Let's see if it spins flat. Eh, it's pretty hard to see. No bad noises. Oh, I can see it perfectly from here. It's perfect. It's nice and centered and it's balanced. And okay, so the drilling was the good thing to do. All right, so move the head out to one. 50, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Oh, I didn't see anything. Um, I didn't see anything because the, the probe has gotten out. So hold on a second. So what has happened is this thing has gotten out of one. Let's try again. 
There you go. So it caches on 109, so I think we are perfect. Yeah. We have four tracks out. 105. Lock. Right, you have lock. Alright, so it's locked on 105 and I have to advance the head with the screw. Once you get close to this pattern, I'm going to zoom in. So, uh, there you go, coming on. So you tell me when... When it looks like this. There you go. Okay, now we have to go to higher amplification. Okay, now we're trying to even those out. You know that perfect is good, or? Yeah, I might as well. Because we don't know. That's good, yeah, that's good. There you go. Light it up. Man, this is so delicate. Alright, and then I have to figure out which screw. Okay. You gotta get your set screw out. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Power her up. Okay. So we got a net boot first, or what are we gonna do? Just this. We want, want want to go for the kill and try Let's this boot, right? Okay. That's weird because that has nothing to do with line match, right? You should play. This one. No. We're having the same kind of errors. Let's see. Sector leak. Hmm, that's almost like an interface issue. Wait, I'm, you know what, I might have the wrong I'm, I'm terminator. I'm confused that it didn't even try to... Um, okay. Seek? To seek, yeah. I'll tell you, I, I will take this off and put the, the okay. correct terminator yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. So we believe we used the wrong terminator, or at least Carl's believe that, because I don't know anything about that. Okay, okay new terminator. Scavenger, or we're gonna try boot. Let's go for the boot, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Boot. Woo! We rely on the darn thing. Okay. It uh, it booted. It's fine. You can read the disc. Uh, you want to do a Neptune on it? See if you can get the. Uh, let me get a camera closer. See if you can read the, the stuff. Our, our monitor is a little, little bit faded today. We haven't run it for a while. Do this. We can. No, okay. we can that. Should I run Scavenger on it? See if you can read all the tracks. Scavenger. That's a program that checks the discs. The, the disc file thing really. Auto file system Scavenger. Do you want to change discs? No. This one cylinder has more la 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 la. May I alter the disc? No. Same as Kevin. And then you see this thing going down. It means it's reading all the tracks. Let's see if we are aligned all the way down. Whoa, that was quite an adventure yeah. from the. Uh, Cleaning the heads, the this back breaking on us, the lining on the wrong tracks. <laughs> yep, all done. Yeah, nothing, nothing bad. Okay, so we're back to having a full disc. Mm -hmm. You might inspect the heads and see if there's no. Yeah, we can do that. It's hard to tell. Yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, not a speck. Oh, it's fresh from factory. So we have been doing some good job with our uh, cleaned and realigned discs here. And uh, 
all of these we were able to archive those are all from the original uh, Xerox uh, park and we're just only two or three that are causing us trouble so uh, Ken and Carl are working on them Okay, our last recalcitrant cartridge. This one has it has this little gouge in it, so mm -hmm. so it's probably going to be. So that's the one we were going to do at the last mm -hmm. time, but we don't know if the gouge is if it protrudes, then we're screwed. If it's deep inside, then we're fine. No. Oh, the well, middle is relevant. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Don't turn it off. It's past it. No. Can I? We're almost done. Yeah, so I think it just hit the bad spot. Mm -hmm. And then got some stuff on the head. Alright, well that was the last one, so that was the one we were willing to get the heads so this is touching a bit. 67 meter or so. Woohoo! Yeah, it's gone. We need to take it off and realign it. <laughs> 